Whew. Ah, welcome back to the workshop, guys. Now I see you eyeing my impressive ball sacks. <laughs> but before you get all smart in the comments, no, this is not for my Forrest Gump cosplay. Whatever that means. Today I'll be making something pretty sweet. If this is not your first day on the internet, you've probably seen streamers and YouTubers use nano leafs and other RGB lights for creative room backlight. But in my opinion, that look is kind of dated by now. So uh, this is going to be something next level. A huge, high-powered, wall-sized light array capable of animations from scratch and on the cheap. Yes. Oh yeah, and it's gonna have Wi-Fi, so not just a lamp. How dare you. So, building montage begins now. I'll be using a few hundred of these addressable LEDs. They kind of work like NeoPixels. However, as luck would have it, they come in the world's ugliest color scheme, so we must fix that first. And that means masking each and every LED. Two, one, zero! That sucked. After all that assembly line work, a breath of fresh air couldn't have come quicker. But then I unfreshened the air with some white spray paint. Sorry, ozone. While the paint's drying, it's time to get our spicy pencils out and fumigate the workshop. I was constantly interrupted by the fire alarm and it just kept making me dizzy. I'm kidding, but after making hundreds of holes in the end, the fumes really did reach harmful Eurodance inducing levels. <coughs> Alright, for now, this is our canvas. In future, I'll redo this room in white for more light reflection. There should be enough LEDs to cover the entire wall top to bottom, but I need to get the spacing right. Another round with a masking tape and it's time to do a test fit. All the LED strands have connectors on both ends so they can be linked together. Only the beginning of our array will be connected to the controller. Alright, so before we continue we need to set up one of these. An ESP8266 chip. It has a Wi-Fi chip, so that's gonna be the thing that's gonna be linking our lights with our home network. The firmware that I'm gonna be running on this guy is called WLED and it's really cool. Um, it has companion iOS and Android apps so you can control it with your phone. Setting this whole thing up took me like 3 minutes max, and I'm gonna be linking the official tutorial down below. To power this entire thing, I got myself a 30 ampere 5 volt power supply. You just need to attach the power cord and some output wires. For now, I'm using just some jumper wires to connect the controller. And the power supply connects to these wires. Here goes nothing. <laughs> oh wow, that's so cool. Houston? We have a problem. This phenomenon is called voltage drop and I just wanted to show you guys how to deal with it. Basically our circuit is so long that the voltage falls off below useful levels. To solve this we need to add additional power wires to different parts of the circuit straight from the power supply. It's working. <laughs> you got physics. By running so many dedicated power lines we'll be able to max out the brightness and really push this array to its limits. Ta-da! Okay, so... <laughs> this one is called Heartbeat. <laughs> this one's my favorite. Let's turn the speed slightly down. Oh yeah, much better. So, proof of concept is done. Time to tidy up the wires a little bit and put on the ping pong balls. I solder all the extra power wires and then cover them in shrink tube. Sadly I didn't have any white shrink tube in stock, so I used black one, I just need to remember to paint it. To reduce the spaghetti factor, I'm using some zip ties to group the LED wires with the power wires. The power supply is in the closet, so I'm using a cable organizer to route all the wires there. With all the wires hidden and grouped, it's actually a pretty clean look. So if the purpose of the ping pong balls wasn't already clear, They'll be providing light diffusion for our LEDs, and it's much needed, especially in front of a dark wall. Also, once they're out of focus on a camera, like, you know, for a background as they're meant to be, they'll have a natural, neutral look to them. So there she is, in her full RGB addressable glory. Ta-da! It took a little while, but uh, how cool is this? I think I'll turn off the video light just to show how bright it is. Click. Ooh, it's nice and intimate. I don't know, can you see me? 
So to make this and many other cool animations possible, I subdivided the entire array of LEDs into individual segments. That's why even though the LEDs are hooked up in a zigzag, you can see them pulsing all evenly from the bottom to the top, even though some of them are running downwards logically. Man, I'm just so stoked right now how it all turned out. I'm already thinking about different ways how I could use it. Uh, maybe using it as like a 8-bit screen for like some Atari games, like over the entire wall or something, or connecting it to my Twitch to have um, like alerts or cheers show up in different colors or like text or something. Yeah, that would be like just the sickest. And since the LEDs are digital, you can connect them to any number of devices that support that. Um, from standalone controllers to Arduinos, and even some PC gaming motherboards support that. For now though, I'll just use them as is, um, until I figure out exactly what I want from them. It's only after I spent some time with them that I realized how soothing the animations can be. It's kind of like watching running water, um, this sort of visual ASMR, you know? Honestly, I'm really impressed with how this turned out, and would definitely do it again. If you want something like this of your own, I'll leave the parts list down below. That being said, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just starting out on YouTube, so it would mean a lot to me if you would leave a like or a comment if you think that the video deserves it. It would help with all the YouTube algorithms and all that. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to ask them down below in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. But yeah, thank you again. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs>